Good day to you, and what are you up to today? What have you done already by the time you're looking at this video, and what are you going to do after you watch the video? I'm talking about the places that you're going to visit. I'm talking about the methods of transportation. And really what I'm talking about is when you go around to the convenience store, to your dormitory, to your apartment, to the grocery store, to a friend's house, to a bar, to a doctor's office, wherever it is that you go, what kind of media are you coming into contact with? What kind of magazines are laying on the table? What kind of TV shows are playing on the wall? What kind of radio stations are hitting your ears from speakers at gas stations or wherever you are? What kind of newspapers are you seeing laying around on, on tables? Because what this chapter is all about is accessibility of media. And it has to do with during your daily travels, what kinds of media do you come into contact with easily? Which ones are free? Which ones sort of land in your lap? Like when you go to Wawa and you leave and you see the Pocono record is sitting right there for you and it's a dollar. I mean, that's a little bit of a, a an expense if you're broke, but overall it's a cheap, cheap way to buy a newspaper. So that's kind of easy to get to versus something like a New York Times. Um, and where do you have to go to to get that? Actually, if you're a student, you can get the New York Times for free on campus in one of the vending machines in Stroud Hall when you swipe your idea, your ID. But the basic premise of my opening here is that media are have different levels of accessibility. Some are easy to get to and some are hard to get to. You have to pay for them or you have to special order them or get them on home, bo home box office, HBO, or pirate them from a friend or go to another country to see them to begin with. So with that in mind, we build upon our earlier chapters, and now we're looking at accessibility. And we're looking at those branches of the tree, those finer branches that go out and take the, what we'll eventually study as the leaves, take those leaves to the people who are passing by the tree. And when you look at a tree, some leaves are really easy for you to see, some smaller branches, because they're right in front of you. Whereas others, especially if it's a tall tree, you can't see them, the very top ones or the ones on the other side. So think of media that way as well, that there are media surrounding you all the time, which are very easy to get to, and then some which are rather, rather hard to get to. And all of this, of course, influences the patterns of your media use. We tend to use the things that are easier and cheaper to get to. Now, before we head a little bit further, there are a bunch of terms in this chapter which are defined for you. I'll just pick out a couple of them here for you. Broadsheet versus a tabloid is one set of terms that's defined. And that's important because newspapers generally follow one of two formats. They either follow the broadsheet format. That's when we have to open it up and it becomes a broadsheet. You need a significant space to lay it on versus the tabloid, which is more like a book in its shape. And it actually comes from the, the ancient um, term for tablet. It's a, you know, a portrait shaped object. And that's what a a tabloid is and you can read that kind of a publication in much smaller spaces like trains and and sitting on the bus and even in elevators versus a broadsheet you really got to be by yourself so think about that um, there are other terms that are also spoken about in this chapter that you should know as well terrestrial being one of them terrestrial broadcast is how we broadcasters refer to very strictly traditionally broadcasting facilities and what I'm talking about is sending the signal over the airwaves over the earth, the terra, terrestrial, that's where that comes from, versus sending TV by cable, sending TV by satellite, even streaming it wirelessly. Uh, we're talking about terrestrial when we're talking about strict broadcasting, which has the biggest penetration amongst um, households because it's free. You know, there's still a lot of countries that just get their TV straight over the air through terra, through terrestrial uh, signals. Now let's head into the individual countries and talk about what really marks them, sets them apart from other countries in terms of the accessibility of media. In France, newspapers are very, very, well, lofty. They're full of content that is, um, we'll find this out later even more in the next chapter, that is very, very stuffy and academic and very intellectual. And so newspaper readership is very low. The penetration of newspapers in France is only 33.1%. Um, magazines are a little bit part of the picture for the reason why, because magazines carry a lot of the gossip stuff, and, and newspapers just don't do that in France. It's kind of different from here in the U.S. and Britain. Um, but nevertheless, newspaper readership is low. Um, when we have radio in France, we're talking about a bunch of public 
radio stations. Now remember in France, these are stations that have to raise their money 50% from advertising and 50% from the license fee. But it is the license fee that makes these programs possible because they don't have to have popular appeal. They can just simply serve a particular audience and do it well. So you've got France Bleu or French Blue, which is regional radio. You've got France Culture. You've got France Info. You've got France Inter, which is a pop music channel. And you've got France Musique, which is classical music. Back to the pop music channel, just think about that for a moment. We don't have that kind of a situation in the United States where NPR decides to get in on popular music and to help set the tone for the tastes of young people and older people listening to that kind of music. We see NPR as really more of an educational medium. So think about France's example here, and we'll find it to be the case for Britain also, which is a new kind of thinking for you probably. Because it's all about a public radio station saying, hey, we want to be in the game of what young people think, so we're going to do pop music. Over on TV, you've got an interesting setup of you've got two very powerful and well-funded French um, government stations, even though they get 50% of their revenue from advertising. Um, one is a general interest channel, that's France 2, or French 2. And one is a general interest channel with a cultural and regional emphasis. And by that, I mean you always see that channel with a program where some small town where they've been making cheese a certain way for a long time is being featured in a documentary on that France 3 channel. Of course, with people drinking a bunch of wine along with it. I mean, after all, it is France. And then they have this France 5, which is half German and half French. And so half of the day is programmed by the French and the other half is programmed by Germany. And, you know, there's a lot of tie-in between France and Germany. So that's how accessibility is to a certain extent in France. Moving on to Sweden now. In Sweden, newspapers have the opposite. They have very high penetration. 88% of people are reading newspapers on a daily basis in Sweden. That's a lot of reading um, of newspapers. And, in, in fact, they have seven dailies. Um, these are big newspapers in a small country of only 8 million people, seven dailies, and they have four serious newspapers, which are also called the morning newspapers. So the serious newspapers are in the morning, and then in the afternoons, the tabloids come out, the tabloids with the gossip and the crime and the sensationalism. So it's interesting that Swedes read according to that way. In the morning, it's serious news. In the afternoon, it's that kind of dramatic, um, scandalous news. In terms of radio in Sweden, you have a plethora, hope you know that word, a plethora of radio stations. You've got 